morning. It is truly an honor to uh, stand before this group. Uh, I have to tell you, of all the people, there are 20 million people within an hour or two drive distance from this very room right here. But of all the people who could have and probably should have showed up, only you, the self-selected, bold entrepreneurs of our time, chose to get out of bed, and some of you, to get on a plane, pack a bag, go through the expense and energy to show up in this very room, I first want to start by commending you for being the leaders of tomorrow. Amen. Yes. It's said that uh, success, 80% of it is just showing up. So while other people outside this room are wringing their hands, fretting about the economy, only worried about putting a rear end in their recliner today, you showed up to be here. And so my job is to get you the other 20% of the way so that you can get 100% to the ideas, uh, strategies, and information you need to accomplish your dreams, goals, and ambitions within this business as well as within your life. And for the last 20 years, I have intensely studied the area of personal development and human achievement. And for the last 15 years, I've actually been in the business of personal development. So I've had the privilege of uh, building products with and doing events for and producing television programs with some of the greatest thought leaders, writers, authors, and speakers of our time. And if you read Success Magazine, I get a chance to sit down one-on-one -on -one with some of today's greatest and most celebrated achievers. And so you can say that on this stage here today is not just me, but it's also Richard Branson and Donald Trump and Dr. Oz and Susie Orman and John Maxwell and the rest because they've deposited their ideas. I've had a chance to sit down and probe them to pull out the very best ideas that they have to become successful. And so all of their ideas are going to be presented to you here this morning. Here's my big, hairy, audacious goal. I want this to be the best, most impactful, life-changing success talk you have ever heard. And that's my goal. And so if you're ready, say, I'm ready. You are ready. All right, so here's what we want to accomplish. I want to discuss what separates those that are on the cover of Success Magazine from everybody else. What, what's the difference? What do they do? I mean, we all have 24-7, right? We were all born, you know, scared and naked. And then whatever we did thereafter either put you on the cover of Success Magazine, made you wealthy, or maybe you struggle and live paycheck to paycheck. What's the difference between those two points? I'm going to give you it because there's one answer, and I think it's the foundation, the fundamental foundation to which all success then is built upon. So I want to give you that one ingredient that separates ordinary from the extraordinary and what I call the X factor. What is the one thing you could do? Of all the books that you could read and all the lectures that you could listen to, what's one thing that you could focus on that will multiply your results by two, by five, by ten? So if you're earning $50,000 a year or you're earning $100,000 a year right now, what will multiply that times two, times five, times 10? If you have a great relationship, what will bolster that relationship by two, by five, by 10? If you think you're a good parent right now, what will make you an even better parent by two, by five, by 10? I'm gonna give you what that one ingredient is. Of all the things that I've studied and the, the people that I have probed, this is that one factor. So let's start with what it is not. I want to clear up all the excuses people make for why they're not doing better in life right now. Because I'll guarantee you this, outside this room, there are thousands of people who came from worse families than yours, had worse parents than yours, more dysfunction than yours. They have less education than you have. They have less social connections and status than you have. Hey, they're even uglier than you but they are worth 10 times the amount of money you're worth right now. Why is that? If it's not age, race, creed, color, gender, education, what family you're from, who you know, if none of those are the variables that determine success versus struggle, then what is it? Let's make this a little bit more intimate. Right here in this very organization, there are people in this room that are of, of varying income levels. The same opportunity, but varying income levels. Why is that? Well, it must be one of a few variables. So let's dis dissect those. One, it could be the company. So does Ryan Blair 
does he have different company policies and procedures for Hispanics versus Caucasians? Are you sure? No? Well, then it must be the products, right? Blake. Blake shipped different products into the rich neighborhoods versus poor neighborhoods. Same products? Well, then it can't be the products. Well, let's talk about the compensation plan. It's that Nick, right? Nick has a different commission plan for white people versus black people, right? Women versus men? Christians versus Protestants or Protestants versus Catholics or Republicans versus Democrats? See, this is the great equal opportunity employer. No matter who you are, where you've come from, where you're at today, your age, your race, your education level, everybody has exactly the same opportunity. So if none of those are the variables, what is? It's you. You are the only variable that's different between somebody that is just getting started making very little money and somebody that is doing extraordinarily well. See, here's, if we could take a snapshot of this room and come back six to nine months from now, here's what I'll promise you. In six to nine months, there'll be people, maybe even just getting started right now, who will be making $500 a month. Six to nine months from now, this very room, there will be people who are making $5,000 a month. And I'll guarantee you, there will be people six to nine months from now who could be making 10 times $5,000 a month. Same room, same opportunity, same time and place. What's the difference? The difference is you. What you apply to the company, to the products, to the opportunities. See, here's how it works. You are the center of your universe. The rest of the world does react and respond to you. See, no matter where you look, you're still in the middle. <laughs> you are the causal source of everything in your life. Let me give you the one day that changed my life. The one life philosophy that changed my life. I was 18 years old. I was waiting for a table in a restaurant and I met a guy, stranger to me. We got talking. He invited me to a seminar. I went to the seminar. There was something unique about the guy, so I was encouraged to go. And at the seminar, they were having a discussion about relationships. And the lecturer said, what is the shared percentage between the two people of making that relationship work? I was 18. I thought I knew it all. I blurted out, 50-50. The look on the lecturer's face made it obvious to the group that that was not the right answer. <laughs> Somebody else then said, 51-49, because you've got to be willing to do just a little bit more than the other person. The look proceeded. And then somebody said, 80-20. And I don't remember exactly what their explanation was, but it involved some sort of an algorithm, right? So the lecturer just finally turned to the, to the board and wrote, 100-0. Until you're willing to take 100% responsibility for the betterment of that relationship, will that relationship work? Because if you're ever giving something with the expectation that you're going to get back, that relationship will always be open and vulnerable to being doomed. Taking 100% responsibility for your life in every aspect. This sounds simple, but it truly transformed my life. Because see, you have caused every outcome in your life. You are personally responsible for everything in your life. Either you have caused it by what you have done, or you have caused it by what you have not done, or if something happened to you, you are still 100% responsible for how you responded. See, it's not the economy. It's not who's president. It's not the tax code. It's not what party's in office. It's not what's going on within your industry. It's not the other person in your relationship. It's not your company. It's not your neighborhood. It's not your family. It's not your relationships. It's you. This concept changed my life. When you realize that you are 100% responsible at every moment, you're stuck in traffic, you're late, you are still responsible for how you respond, you will be liberated in life. See, here's how it ends up looking in your life. The outcomes in your life can only ever be as big as you. See, every aspect of your life is a mere reflection of you. You have caused it all. All of it is just a mere reflection. See, so your relationships mirror you. Your bank account mirrors you. Your health mirrors you. Whatever's going on on the inside shows up on the outside. It's a direct cause and effect. It's said that if you look at any one area of somebody's life, you could pretty much tell about every other area because they're all just mere reflections of what's going on on the inside. Let me see if I can make this more tangible. A lot of people say, you know what my problem is? I have a money problem, and so I want to go out. It's about my money. I want to go out and try to make a lot of money. And you probably know people like I know where they go out, they make a lot of money, they lose it all. They make a lot of money, they lose it all. They make a lot of money, they lose it all. Why is that? 
Because Jim Rohn said it best. He says, income seldom exceeds one's level of personal development. I'll give you a dramatic example. We all see the people who are making $30,000 a year, living paycheck to paycheck. All of a sudden, they win the lottery, and they're handed $20 million. Now, what's usually the case two, three years from then? They're broke. How could somebody who makes $30,000 a year get handed $20 million and go broke in three years? Here's why. This is one for your notes. Money will always meet you where you're at. Your money can never grow beyond the level of your personal development. It can be temporary, but it will soon, just like water, seek its own level. This is an example. Imagine you're in a pool and there's too little water. And over here is your money. And you say, I need to get the water level up over here where my money's at. And you say, okay, I've got it. I'll just shove some water over there. And you put a little tidal wave that goes up in that direction. It goes up for a little while, but then what happens? It settles back down to the level of water. Let me give you another example. Oh, you know, before, I want to, I thought about this on the way in the, in the car here. Imagine somebody gave you $20 million dollars and said, you have to take care of this money and make it grow. Do you have the stewardship to handle being given $20 million? Do you have the attitudes, the behaviors, the disciplines, the habits to be able to handle $20 million? Now here's the reality I want you to be faced with. I guarantee you if you're not worth $20 million right now, you don't. Here's why. We live in an abundant, limitless universe. And money seeks the level of every person's level of personal development. You've heard the adage, right, where you could take all the money in the world, take it away from all the rich people, and then evenly divide it amongst everybody, and within 10, 20, 30 years, what will happen? It'll all be back in the same pockets. Why? Because money has no judgment. It just goes to the attraction, to the level of person people are. So here's what's exciting for me. It's not about opportunity. It's not out there. It's not timing, circumstance, family. All I have to do to focus on making more money is work on me. I grow, everything in my life grows with me. Let me give you another example, and that is health. You're in the health business, right? You see this all the time. People, you know, they go out and they, they say, you know, I need to lose weight. They go out and they, they, they make about their weight. The weight's the problem. They don't realize that it's an outcome. They think that it's the cause. And so they go out and they chase diet programs and all the rest of this. And, you know, why is it that 99% of all people who go on a diet program end up gaining all the weight back? Because it was never about the weight. It's all about them. The weight, the health, is, is a mirror. It becomes, I call it, the ultimate personal development billboard. You are wearing your personal development on your body. It is a mere reflection of what's going on on the inside. So don't worry about it. Worry about you. If you improve, everything externally will improve for you. So here is, in 1994, I met my mentor, Jim Rohn, and I went to a seminar, and the, this was the second day that changed my life. And he said these words, and I suggest that you write these down. Two years later, I was making a seven-figure income. Two years after that, I was worth uh, more than a million dollars. And these were the words that changed my life. If you want to have more, you have to become more. For things to change, you have to change. For things to get better, you have to get better. And here's a couple of money shots. For things to improve, you have to improve. If you grow, everything grows for you. It's just like that pool. Instead of sending to try to send water over to these different directions, if you just put more water in the pool, the water level rises, everything around you rises with it. What is putting more water in the pool? Improving your personal development. You improve, everything improves with you. All right, now let's take it a little bit more specifically, right? Let's have some tangible effects into your business right here. I want to make this a very impactful program for you. So let's talk about the things that you are involved in you becoming more successful in this business. Sales, recruiting, communication, leadership. So first of all, tell me, what, um, what products do you sell here at Vaisalis? What, what products? Wellness. Health and wellness. Weight management. Performance. Okay. Let me, let me give you the answer. Let me, let me clear it up for you. You sell you. 
Because when you're talking about performance and health and wellness and weight management, they're not listening to you. They're looking at you. And they're thinking, do I want what this guy's got? Is this woman the person I want to become? Do I want to come off to my friends like this person's coming off to me? See, it's not the words you speak. It's the person behind the words. I love the line that says, who you are speaks so loud I can't hear a word you're saying. Emerson, Emerson thank you. So here's, here's what happens a lot. They, people get worried about what they, what do I say? When I meet a new prospect, what do I say? What's my script? How, what's my sales presentation? They focus on that. Let me give you one of the worst sales presentations of all time, but one of the most effective in recruiting. He said, you follow me. I mean, come on, right? I mean, that's pretty basic. I mean, who, who you know, why, why would that work? It wasn't for what he said. It was for who he was. His name happened to be Jesus Christ, right? So it wasn't what he said. It was who he was. It was all that he was for what he never had to say. Does that make sense? So it's the person behind the words that makes communication, recruiting, and sales effective. And when you improve, everything improves for you. See, I have friends in my life that if they said, you follow me, I'd follow. They wouldn't have to say any more because I have that much respect for who they are. And I also know some people that if they said, you follow me, or if they said anything, no matter how elaborate, how incredible, how enthusiastic, how passionate their presentation was, I ain't following. <laughs> Do you understand the difference? So... If you want to improve your recruiting, your, your communication, your sales, your leadership, improve you. Become what everybody else seeks. Be the leader that you want to attract, right? Be the person that you want to involve within your business. If you're that person first, everything will come to you. All right, so now that we have discovered, let's, let's take a, a second here to see where we're at. We've discovered that you are the cause of all the outcomes in your life. Now, I don't want to just leave you there, right? Okay, here's, here's the issue, everybody. You're the problem. Have a great day, okay? <laughs> I want to take this a level deeper and say, okay, well, how can we work on you? How can we improve this? So there's, there's a few areas, typically, that you can focus on to try to improve you. And what I want to do is to have you tell me which areas you think are most effective to work on. So I want you to think of the most successful people. Uh, Richard Branson and the Donald Trumps and the Oprah Winfrey's, uh, you know, the Ryan Blair's, right? The, the, the Nick and Blake or whoever in your mind you think it, uh, personifies si significant success. And just give me one word that describes them. Communicator. Commitment. Commitment. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Commitment. Determined. Uh, tenacity. Discipline. Integrity. I'm sorry, you tried hard. What? Loving. Loving. Motivator. Motivator. Confidence. 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 I'm sorry. Passionate. Listener. Passionate. Passionate, sincere. Influencer. Apathetic. Apathetic. Okay, they have empathy. Okay. <laughs> Apathetic wouldn't be good. All right, all right, that, that's enough. Thank you. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen different uh, types. So here are the, the three areas that you can go to work on. You can work on skills and tactics, you can work on product knowledge, or you can work on attitude. So I want to go back through the list and determine whether it's skills and tactics, product knowledge, or attitude. So commitment, what is that? It's an attitude. You know, I'm going to say sometimes it's actually a skill as well. So let's skip that both. All right, commitment. Attitude, attitude right? Determination. Attitude. attitude. Tenacity. Attitude. attitude. Discipline. Attitude. attitude, it's also a little bit of a skill. Uh, what the heck was that? Oh, integrity. <laughs> <laughs> skill. No, it's not. It's an attitude, right? Loving. Attitude. Motivated. Attitude. Confident. Attitude, listener, skill, passionate, attitude, sincere, attitude, uh, influential, skill, empathetic, attitude. All right, so we've got for, for skill, we've got one, two, three, four. Product knowledge, we have zero. 
attitude, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 for attitude, 4 for skill, 0 for product knowledge. Now, the lesson that this teaches you is where are you focusing your training on yourself? And you're in the business of leadership. Where are you focusing your training for your people? Is it product knowledge? Is it skills? Or is it attitude? Because I'm going to tell you, you said of all the most successful people in the, in, in the world, attitude is by far more important. And that's the truth. So let's talk about what is the number one most attractive attitude that you could foster within yourself and that you're looking for when you're out recruiting people. My answer, and somebody said it here, was passion. Let me give you an example. It's a story back in the ancient Christian times. I mean, this is way back when, right, where you couldn't just walk down the street and say, I'm a Christian, right? They'd cut off your head, throw you in jail. I mean, it wasn't like you could put 125,000 people in the Colosseum for a Sunday rally, right? As a matter of fact, back then it was said, if you're a Christian, stay out of the Colosseum, especially on Sundays, right? Feed you to the lions. Well, when times are mean, tough, and ugly, that's when you need leaders. And God was out recruiting. Well, back then, there was this guy called Saul, Saul from Tarsus. And Saul was one of those guys, whatever Saul was into, everybody had to hear about it. Saul had an opinion, everybody was going to know about it. As a matter of fact, his nickname became All Out Saul, right? Didn't do anything halfway. Well, there was one problem about Saul as a potential recruit for Christian leadership. He hated Christians. He hated them so much, and he had so much credibility within the community, he could get letters of authority to go around killing Christians. Well, one day, he hears about this new group growing up in Damascus, and Saul goes into a fit and a rage. He gets letters of authority, gathers some men, and goes booking it for Damascus. If you read the text, it says he was breathing threats of slaughter, which means he felt pretty strongly about it, right? This is one passionate guy. Well, God's looking down on, on all this and says, look at that Saul. That guy's incredible. That's my guy. The heavens part, lightning bolt comes from the sky, knocks Saul off his horse, buries his face in the sand, blinds him for three days. God's got some recruiting tools we just don't have available to us, right? I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> Did you say no to this opportunity? Blinded for three days. <laughs> I mean, that would be great. Well, as the story goes, Saul from Tarsus becomes Paul the Apostle. And if you read the, the, the text, it says, the, the things I once hated, I now love. The things I once loved, I now hate. He became one of the greatest early Christian leaders of, of all time. And the point of the story is, is this was a strong feeling, passionate purpose. Now, person, I've had some people in business that... Uh, when I first approached them, they were passionately against me. And some of them ended up, ended up becoming partners. When I could finally win them over into my way of thinking or point them in the direction that I wanted them to go, all I had to do was get out of the way, look out, because they would charge at the door. Now, isn't that better than finding somebody who's easily converted, that every two, three days you've got to call them and pump them up, yes, you really can do this, and no, it's going to be okay, right? You want to find passionate strong feeling people and that's what you want to develop within yourself.